Hello YouTube and welcome back to another alternate history video and today I got the 1976 presidential election and this time I got it between Jimmy Carter still who was a Democratic nominee but I got the Republican nominee of Spiro Agnew who was the vice president under Nixon and uh, Spiro Agnew actually resigned uh, let me get that off there okay like I was saying Spiro Agnew was the VP under Nixon, uh, it did a, it did have some scandals, and he was Maryland governor. I think it was some to do with bribes or something like that. But anyway, he did resign. Well, VP because I called up with him when he was Maryland governor. I believe he was accepting bribes or it was something like that. But he uh, resigned because of that. But in this alternate scenario, this could be where if maybe that didn't happen, like. Like I said, that didn't happen, and he doesn't resign, but Nixon still does resign because Watergate still happens, but Sparrow Agnew takes over as president after Nixon resigns instead of Ford because, of course, Ford was appointed vice president when Sparrow resigned. And then, of course, Nixon resigned not long after, at least a year or two after, and then Ford took over as president, so he was the nominee in 76. But like I said, this scenario is where if, Spiro Agnew didn't have that corruption scandal and he's still vice president when the 76 election comes around. Or, excuse me, he's actually president when the 76 election comes around because he took over after Nixon's resignation. Like I said, Watergate was still happen, And so Spiro is the nominee as president. And also inflation, stagflation, all that that was going on during this time still occurs. But anyway, uh, so yeah, like I said, I got these two. And, of course, like I said, Jimmy Carter was a Democratic nominee. He was the governor of Georgia back in the day. And he ran on an outsider message and ran on uh, putting trust back in government after Nixon's resignation. So he was able to win against Ford because Ford did pardon Nixon. Despite Nixon not being charged with any crime, Ford still went in and pardoned him in case he was. So that definitely hurt Ford's standing with voters some and Carter was able to get the victory kind of narrowly, but it was still a victory nonetheless. However, uh, we'll see if he can still get this victory against President Spiro Agnew in this alternate scenario. So starting out, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the South. Carter won most of it. He definitely won his home state of Georgia, so I think that will still go for him, having that home state support. Uh, he also won Alabama and Mississippi. So I think those will stick with them as well because, like I said, that Southern support as well as Louisiana, Arkansas, and I believe Tennessee and Kentucky both went for him. That's definitely having a Southern uh, appeal here, and they did. And Arkansas did as well. So I think this would be pretty solid for Carter. Uh, Missouri also went for him, but I think it was a pretty narrow one, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm going to look at that. So it was about at least three or four points there. Because Carter definitely had his appeal in rural areas, as you see there. So I think Carter would win it in this scenario since he won in the actual scenario. Like I said, that rural southern appeal that he had, I think he would still win these against Spiro. And he also won South Carolina and North Carolina too. So I think he would win in this scenario. Uh, Virginia, however, went for... Nixon because of the or excuse me Ford I went for Ford because of like no the northern suburbs in the state uh, Carter did great in several, a lot of rural areas but Ford strength definitely came in the suburbs as the suburbs were Republican were more Republican back then especially in Virginia as you see there so I think for that reason uh, it was only about a couple points but I could see Spiro Agno hanging on to it narrowly. I could maybe see it flipping Carter because Spiro, it was from Maryland, but Maryland does border Virginia. So I could see Spiro still having great appeal in the suburbs and the northern part. So I think he could still narrowly win Virginia like Ford did in our timeline. Uh, I think Spiro, I could see Indiana narrowing up, but I think he could still pull it off because they do go for Ford. Of course, Indiana has been a very historic Republican state for many years. They went for Obama in 2008, but other than that, it 
hadn't voted Democratic since 1964 when LBJ won it. As you see, there was a seven-point margin that Ford won about. So I could definitely see it narrowing up maybe some, but I think Spiro could still pull it off since Ford was able to win it. Uh, Illinois was another state one by Ford. I think that was only about a couple points or so because it done good in around the collar counties around Chicago. Of course, that, that was more Republican back then, just like the northern Virginia suburbs. So I think for that reason, Spiro could still win Illinois like Ford did a uh, point or two because of those suburbs in the state. And giving them the victory. Uh, Iowa was another state that actually went for Ford. Of course, Iowa was a swing state for many years. Around this time, it kind of leaned more Republican, but up until like the late 80s and to the 90s, and even into all the way up until at least 2012, it was more Democratic as there was a farming crisis in the 80s, which definitely hurt. Uh, it happened under the Reagan administration, though, so that kind of hurt us standing in the state and the state became more democratic, but it was still technically kind of a swing state because it was usually close. And a lot of the elections went for G.W. Bush in 2004 by a narrow margin, but it was more democratic around this time. But around this time, like in the 70s, it was more Republican stronghold. So I think Spiro could hang on to it since Ford won it. Uh, I think Spiro was, would take a, most of these uh, Great Plains states, though, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma have been very Republican for many years, so I don't really see these changing. Uh, Texas was a state that went for Carter, however, because of this southern appeal. So for that reason, I think Carter would still win it, doing good and great in rural areas. While Spiro could do better, like in suburbs like Houston, Dallas. But I see Carter with rural support, southern support, they would win Texas like it did in our timeline. Uh, Spiro, however, I think he's going to take the Mountain West here, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, more Republican strongholds. I think he did pretty good with Mormon voters. I don't know if he did that spectacular, but I think he did decent enough. I don't think they would vote for Carter's because they've done in the actual timeline. So I think Spiro would stay on to these. Uh, Ford did win the whole West Coast here, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, as well as Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, as these were more Republican states back then, especially like Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada. They weren't usually that competitive back then. Definitely were more Republican as they were more sparsely populated. So uh, for that reason, I think Spear would win all of these still like Ford did. Because of sparsely populated, dense areas in the state. I don't think they'd be too competitive, so I see Spiro hanging on to them. Uh, uh, Spiro, I think, would still take Washington and Oregon, because I could say he had a pretty good appeal in the suburbs there, maybe, because he was a pretty moderate governor from Maryland. So I think he could do pretty good in, like, Portland, Seattle. And since Ford was able to win them, I think Spiro could still win them. Uh, California was Nixon's home state. Of course, it, it was won by Ford, but, but I think that was only about a couple points, too. So this could definitely be an interesting one, but I think because since California definitely had a more Republican identity and streak back then, that Spiro would still win it. Uh, but I think it could be very close, probably about a point or a little less. But since California is definitely more Republican back then because of more rural areas, and I think Southern California was more Republican that Spiro Agno could take, of course, Carter do pretty good, like in the Bay Area. But I could see Spiro doing pretty decent there, too. So I think it would hang on to California by about the same margin that Ford went about. I think Spiro would take Alaska because, of course, that's been a Republican stronghold. And I did go for Ford. Hawaii, however, went for Carter, so I think it would hang on to it. Of course, that's a Democratic stronghold. And uh, Minnesota went for Carter because he had Mondale as his running mate. So I think it would still win here. Uh, Wisconsin, I believe, went for Carter, if I'm not mistaken. And Michigan went for four. That was his home state. So, uh, yeah, like I said, Wisconsin went for Carter. And this part definitely came uh, 
throughout this region of the state. So, uh, as you see there, like I said, Carter's strength was definitely up in this part. A lot of working class areas. And, like I said, the stagflation and all that was going on during this time, too. So, I think Carter would still win Wisconsin since he won an overtime loan because of stagflation that was going on in the economy. I think Carter would have the right message, like he did in the actual timeline, to win it. Uh, Michigan, like I said, did go for Ford. It was his home state, but with Spiro Agno being the nominee, I can maybe see it flipping Carter because Spiro wouldn't have that home state factor like Ford did. Uh, it was 51-46. As you see, Carter did good in the Upper Peninsula, but Ford did better elsewhere. It's at least about five to six points. But uh, I don't know. I think this one definitely be a toss-up because Ford's not on the ballot, so... Maybe Carter could pull it off because of doing good in the Upper Peninsula and doing better in the rest of the state because Ford's not a Republican nominee. So I just kind of have this gut feeling that Carter would actually flip Michigan in this scenario because of the stagflation and stuff. Like I said, that was going on. He run on the right economic message, being in, running as an outsider like he did in the actual scenario and uh, running on combating stagflation and Ford not being on the ballot, I think. Carter could pull it off in Michigan, but I could definitely see that being a narrow one. I could say it going either way, like I said, but I just have this feeling since four won't be on the ballot that Carter could pull it off. Uh, Ohio was another state that went for Carter, but I believe it was the closest state in the election. It was very narrow. Uh, I'll go to it here. So, yeah, as you see, there is less than 1%. Carter did great, like in the northeastern part, which was more of a Democratic stronghold. It was more of a working class area, but now it's more Republican today. But, of course, it was more Democratic back then. And that's where Carter's strength was. And he did pretty decent in southern Ohio and some rural areas. But his strength definitely came, like, in the northern and northeastern part. So I think for that reason, Carter could still pull it off narrowly because of the stagflation that was going on. I think his message would definitely resonate in the Rust Belt here. Uh, I think Carter could take Pennsylvania as he did in the actual scenario because it went in like the suburbs in the state, Erie County. Stagflation, like I said, I think it would be enough for Carter to win. I think he could still win New York because he did in the actual scenario doing great in New York City. But I could definitely see that being a close one because Spiro is from Maryland. Uh, I think Spiro would still take Nevada, or excuse me, New Hampshire and Vermont like uh, Ford did because these are more Republican strongholds. So I think Spiro would be the right fit for these states being from Maryland. And uh, all of Maine did go for Ford, so I could see Spiro doing the same still. As, like I said, New England here. States are definitely more Republican back then. Uh, Massachusetts, however, went for Carter. Of course, that's been a Democratic stronghold. It's rarely gone Republican. I, I believe Reagan won in 84, but other than that, of course, been really Democratic. He even went for McGovern in 72. What take? So, uh, Jake, look. So, uh, this was definitely a solid margin. So, I think Carter would still take it. Uh, West Virginia was a state that went for him. Of course, West Virginia was a Democratic mm -hmm. stronghold for many years. So, I think Carter would still win in this case. That's his southern appeal. And you see he's over the top there at 281. But for the rest of these, I think Rhode Island would go for him still. It did go for him in our timeline by a pretty solid margin. Uh, Connecticut. Uh, 
was a Ford state, a margin of 5%. Uh, because of that, I think Spiro could still win it, because he definitely has his roots being from Maryland. Uh, New Jersey, I believe, was a, another Ford state. That was more of a Republican state, too, back then. Uh, waiting for us to load. <laughs> but uh, I'll go ahead and do some others while that loads. So, D.C., I think, will go for Carter still. They'll go for him. Democratic stronghold. Uh, okay, so here it goes. Uh, like I said, New Jersey was a Ford state. And like I said, Agnew being from Maryland, I think, would be a great fit for it. It was by a few points, so I think uh, Spiro could still pull it off. Uh, Delaware. It was a Carter State. About a few points or so. 51 to 46. Uh, I think that one would be pretty close, but since Carter was able to pull it off, I could see him winning it in this scenario against Agnew. I think that could definitely be a close one. And Agnew's home state of Maryland, they go for Carter. Carter did great in Baltimore, so that was able to get him to victory in the state. But this being Spiro, being his home state, being the governor, I can maybe see him winning it. It was 53-46, about a six-point margin. Of, I could definitely say this one going either way, but I have a feeling that Spiro could pull it off. Being the governor of the state, being his home state, I think he would pull it off. But I could, like I said, I could definitely say this one maybe going either way, but I think he could pull it off because, like I said, being his home state. And uh, it would definitely have his great northeastern appeal. Uh, Florida is the remaining state. I did go for Carter. He did great in rural areas. And, of course, uh, Florida typically votes for incumbents, but, but it actually went against the incumbent forward in this in our timeline. But with Spiro being the incumbent, I could see Carter still winning it because of doing great in the northern part and throughout the rest of the state in the panhandle as a stagflation and things that were going on. So I think Carter would pull off Florida since he was able to win in our timeline. And he's the victor still, 308 to Spiro Agnes, 229. So he does do a little better against Spiro than he did against Ford. But the only state that I think really flipped here is Michigan as a Ford not being on the ballot. And Maryland also flipping too. So Michigan and Maryland both flipping to the other guy. And Carter, like I said, does get 308, Spear of Agno 229. Uh, like I said, with the stagflation stuff that's still going on, if Spear was a nominee, I believe Carter would still pull it off. And, and Spear maybe would have pardoned Nixon too, like Ford did. So that would have hurt him like it did Ford. So I think Carter would still pull it off for those reasons. And like I said, Spear would be the nominee if he didn't have to resign, like if that corruption scandal didn't happen when he was governor. But I believe, like I said, Carr would still pull it off because of the circumstances with Nixon's resignation, pardoning if Spiro pardoned him too, like Ford and stagflation, I think it would be enough for Carter to still win like he did in our timeline. But uh, if you have a different thought on it or if you disagree or agree, just comment below what you think. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.